Hello, I'm Jeannie Caldwell, and welcome to In His Presence. We've been talking about familiar spirits. This is part four, actually, of this teaching. We kind of had a gap in the middle. We did uh, two sessions of it, then had some uh, interviews and things like that, and then we're coming back and trying to finish up in these last couple of weeks on familiar spirits because it's something you need to know about. It's just as important as anything else in the Word. Jesus talked a lot about it, about it in the book of Mark. So read the book of Mark and find out some of the things that he said. Now, I ended up uh, last week talking about uh, can demons be inherited? And they can, but that's normally in your other countries where or other cult cultures and countries where devils are rampant because there's not any Christianity. They're, they're, they have other religions. And so the people are not born again. They do not know Jesus. But they can, uh, you'll find that familiar spirits run in families. And we'll talk about that in, shortly. But this brings me to my next topic that we'll start about, start on uh, now. And that's called reincarnation. Ever heard that word? <laughs> I have. Reincarnation is a lie of the devil. It is. People who claim to have lived before in someone else's body did, but not as a person. They were a demon spirit, not an actual person, but they were a demon spirit in that person. And the people who claim to be reincarnated know all about that person's history. And, uh, and familiarities of others and tell all about it. And people just stand in awe listening. I know you've seen, seen the uh, tapes and the movies and all that and read books about reincarnation. And it's, it's a lie of the devil, I'm telling you. People stand in awe of it. Millions of people believe in reincarnation. Almost one half of the people believe they'll re be reborn in another earthly life. This is denial of the resurrection of Jesus Christ. If souls per perpetually inhabited one body after another, the idea of a bodily resurrection would be absurd. Stop and think about it. If you went, if you died and then came back as a dog or another person or you're going to work out your karma. Karma. Uh, if you had a bad person, they'll put you in a good person's body. I mean, it's just absurd, but people sure believe it by the thousands. Reincarnation is a denial of faith. It denies righteous judgment, for it denies heaven and hell. You stop and think about it. If you just go from one person to another, You'll never go to heaven, and you'll never go to hell. That's reincarnation. Remember, ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. This lesson is to help you recognize deception so you won't be deceived. Hallelujah. Now, the next topic. Are curses for real? Curses, are they for real? A curse is defined in the dictionary as an appeal to God or the gods, little g, to send evil or injury down upon some person or thing. Now, in recent years, people uh, are believing they are under an influence of an evil curse. Nothing wrong with thinking that. You may be. But if you are, you can certainly put a stop to it once you know what it is. As proof, they point to illness or tragedies in their lives and family members. They live in constant fear and torment because of this. To most Americans, they think it's pure superstition. They don't believe that someone can say the right words and uh, put another person under an evil curse or spell. However, it's true. They can. What do curses do? Let me give you an example. A Midwestern family had a conflict with a neighbor, and that neighbor, that neighbor 
pronounced a curse on them. Their house burned to the ground. Their car was demolished in an accident. Two people in their family died unexpectedly, and all this occurred in two months. In addition, there were many minor catastrophes and illnesses too numerous to uh, too numerous to admit, to dismiss as a coincidental. That is a curse that was placed upon him. Now, what you can do, if you don't believe in a curse, and I don't want anybody cursing me, if they start cursing me, I'll just say, look, I don't believe in curses, but you do, so I'm sending it back to you. I don't believe in it, I don't want it, you believe it, you take it and it'll scare them silly because they do believe it. And there are many people, like voodoo practitioners, are said to cause disease, injury, mental disorders, and even death to people miles away. Such account accounts are common and widely practiced. I remember there was a girl in the Philippines who was bitten by demons. She told two men they would die, and they did in less than two weeks. That'd scare anybody, but granted, they were not born again. You've got to remember, there's no fear where Christians are concerned. You've just got to know and recognize the devil and the things that he does. Now, there uh, are divine, there's some divine curses. Let's go to Genesis 3, Genesis 3, uh, verses 14 through 19. 14 through 19. And the Lord God said unto the serpent, Because thou hast done this, thou art cursed above all cattle and above every beast of the field. Upon thy belly shalt thou go, and dust shalt thou eat all the days of their life. And I will put enmity between thee and the woman, and between thy seed and her seed. It shall bruise thy head and thou shalt bruise his heel. Unto the woman, he said, I will greatly multiply thy sorrow and thy conception. In sorrow thou shalt bring forth children, and thy desire shall be to thy husband, and he shall rule over thee. So we, well, let's go on down to 19. And unto Adam, he said, Because thou hast hearkened unto the voice of thy wife, and has eaten of the tree of which I commanded thee, saying, Thou shalt not eat of it. Cursed is the ground for thy sake. In sorrow shalt thou eat of it all the days of thy life. Thorns also and thistles shall it bring forth to thee, and thou shalt eat the herb of the field. In the sweat of thy face shall thou eat bread till thou return to the ground, for out of it was thou taken. For dust thou art, and unto dust shall thou return. Now that's a divine curse. God put that curse on mankind in Genesis. But we find it says in Romans, let's go to Romans 8, 22. In Romans 8, 22, it says, for we know that the whole earth, the whole creation ground, I'll get it in a minute, for we know that the whole creation groaneth and travaileth in pain together until now. So the, the earth is still under a curse, but we are not. And I finished up my session last week saying in Galatians 3.13, we have been redeemed from the curse of the law, Christ being made a curse for us. Praise be to Jesus. Now, uh, it will continue, the curse will continue until Satan is thrown into hell forever. And Revelation 22, 3 says, and there shall be no more curse. That's the end of the book. And it's saying there'll be no more curse. And I praise God for that. Now, the earth is under the curse and so is mankind. But we as Christians speak the word of God and remove curses from us. You know, sometimes you find people who, who grow up in horrible families and they have been treated horrible in so many different ways. They've either been raped or beaten or done something horrible things. And there's curses there. Well, you have to, you have to get them off of you 
in the name of Jesus and tell every curse to take a flight. You're not going to have it in Jesus' name. And it will leave you if you're born again. You've got to be born again, though, and be under the blood of Jesus. Now, other curses of the Bible, Genesis 4, Cain was cursed for killing Abel. Number two, Jacob cursed his son Reuben for sexual immorality. And that was in Genesis 49, 3 and 4. And this was fulfilled as the tribe of Reuben never really excelled and played a minor role in the history of the nation. Three, Balaam was hired to place a curse on the Israelites, but he said, how shall I curse whom God has blessed? <laughs> so he blessed them. I think that's so neat. I think that is so interesting. That's the Old Testament too. I know we've been redeemed from the curse in the New Testament because Christ died for us. But the people in the Old Testament, they had the Word of God to stand on too. Praise God. So we learn from the Bible that curses are real. First, they're real and they are fulfilled. It's not just a wish. It carries out what is pronounced on its object. And second, and of great significance, a curse cannot be pronounced on the righteous. You're righteous if you're born again. And God confirmed to Abraham, I will bless them that bless you, and I will curse them that curse you. Genesis 12, verse 3. If a curse is pronounced on you, like I said, tell the person doing the cursing, I don't believe in those curses. I send it back to you. <laughs> and if anything he puts on you, you say, I break it in the name of Jesus, I'll not have it. And just don't have it. Just don't have it. Now, some of the works of demons and their personalities is a dumbness and deafness, Matthew 9, 32 and 33, blindness, Matthew 12, 22, Vexation, Matthew 15, 21 through 28. Lunatic, Matthew 4, 23 and 24. Unclean, Luke 4, 33 through 36. Suicide, Matthew 17, 14 and 15. Fits, uh, Mark 9 through 20. Lusts, John 8, 42, 44, Ephesians 2, 1 through 3, and 1 John 2, 15 and 16. Error, John 4, 1 through 6. Deception, 1 Timothy 4, 1 and 2. Lying, 2 Chronicles 33, 6. Fear, 2 Timothy 1, 7. Wickedness, Luke 11, 24 through 26. Worldliness, 1 Corinthians 2, 12. Jealousy, anger, resentment, paranoid, self-pity, all forms of selfishness. These are demon spirits and demon personalities. But they've got to be abnormal. It can't be something that, you know, you maybe get mad at someone or, or someone goes blind from an accident or something like that. It wasn't a sickness that did it to them. There's just all kinds of things there that you have to reckon with and deal with. But there are demon personalities out there too. The Bible says, don't give place to the devil. Now, uh, you know, we talked about, I talked about earlier that there are religious spirits, and I mean that there were spirits of lust and spirits of anger and, and different things like that, that demons look for people that are like that so they can jump on them. And there's also a religious spirit. People who try to be super spiritual can open themselves to this spirit. People who are inhibited this is an indication of depression. God made us to express ourselves freely. If you hold back, you're holding back your God-given personality. And then a person who's continually sorrowful and sad will take on a spirit of depression. He won't have the joy of the Lord to help others. Gluttony can be a spirit when someone has an abnormal desire for food. We should not be under bondage or in bondage to anything. Absolutely be free in Christ. Now, the next one I'm going to go to is why are people so drawn to the occult? And they are. Occult means secret, mysterious, relating to supernatural forces, witchcraft, astrology, 
fortune telling, sorcery, Satan worship, and other similar practices are on the rise. Millions of people play games with the occult. Movies and television reflect the popularity of occult themes. It's entertainment. It's entertainment. Palm readers, horoscopes, witches are more visible now than ever before. I tell you, in every a newspaper, there is there's used to be, I hadn't seen it for a long time, but there's a column on your horoscope. And people read it every day before they go to work. It may not be, be in the paper, but it was many years ago because I used to read it, but I got delivered of it. Satan uses these things to coach people into the world of the occult. Many people say they got started by reading their horoscopes every day. And they got in depth. They got into it. But just know that God hates it. He hates it. Deuteronomy, let's look at that up. We looked at that one time, but let's look at that again. Uh, Deuteronomy um, 18, 10 through 12. There shall be found among you any among you that maketh his son or his daughter to pass through the fire or that uses divination or an observer of times or an enchanter or a witch or a charmer or a consulter with familiar spirits or a wizard or a necromancer for all these, for all that do these things are an abomination unto the Lord. And because of these abominations, the Lord thy God doth drive them out from before thee. Verse 14 says, For these nations which thou shalt possess hearkened unto observers of times and unto diviners. So the Lord doesn't want us doing those things. You've got to know that. For many years I didn't know that, but I found out from reading the Word, finding out what the Word says, that's what you need to do. Now, uh, there are other scriptures that we won't go there today, but you've got to know the appeal for the occult is very strong. They want power. The very core of the occult and the quest for it is power. Every witch doctor wants power, great power. Why? So he can control others by fear and superstition curses and lies. He wants to direct others' lives. Satan in the beginning wanted to be like God. He was craving power and glory. And it's astounding uh, how many people, what people do in the pursuit of power. They've cut off their fingers. They've cut off ears and toes as an offering unto these uh, evil spirits to have them control them. Some fast and pray for demon power. There are, there are people who are controlled by demons that can walk on hot coals and are not burned. They eat glass, pierce their skin and not bleed, and perform other amazing feats to demonstrate supernatural, supernatural power. I heard of a minister, I heard a minister say one time on television that he was in Haiti, and the people there were saying, Jesus is good, but the devil is powerful. Well, we know as children of God that Jesus is all powerful. The devil is just a copycat, and that's exactly what he does. He copies. The Christian's quest for power should be for God's power to heal the sick, cast out demons, demons and lift heavy burdens. Jesus said, I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end in Revelation 12, 9 and 10. Now, after power, people want knowledge. They want power and they want knowledge. They want to know about the future. Eve thought she would become wise. So next is pleasure. The games that people play can be challenging and stimulating in the fantasy world. We've got all kind of fantasy movies and fantasy games and all that. You need to watch out for it. It can be, it could be dangerous. People get involved in the occult because they want to escape problems and troubles. Millions turn their lives over to gurus 
seeking release. They also want to escape from insecurities. They can't stand up to strain, wear and tear of their life, and they feel like failures. Demon power is an escape from reality. It's like alcohol and drugs, really. However, you know, you have to, you have to come back and face life sometime or another. You can't keep running. You got to face it. Some people want to know the unknown become ensnared by Ouija boards and tarot cards. Those things are of the devil. They begin reading horoscopes and later get into yoga. Of course, there's a lot of things out there that I, I don't even know what they are. These are various methods that Satan uses to deceive innocent people. So we don't need to be innocent about any of these things. Amen? Now, uh, Satan hates all flesh, particularly Christians' flesh. He delights in your suffering. He delights what you're going through. He really does. Where God is love, Satan is hate. Where God is truth, Satan is a liar. Spiritual warfare is raging every day. Learn to look beyond the circumstance and see the enemy. Know your weapons. Know what you have in the name of Jesus within you. Now, very quickly, let me tell you what about uh, familiar spirits. What are familiar spirits? What do they do? How do they act? What does the Bible say about them? When they get in, how do you get them out? Familiar spirits are familiar with you, with a person, with a place, or a thing. They, uh, they know about you because they have lived with you and around you long enough to know you. Now, you can get rid of them if you know there's some hanging around. Get rid of them. Don't let them know you. But they sure, they sure try to know you. Therefore, they know exactly what it takes to make you feel inadequate, feel rejected, make you withdraw, make you give up and quit. They will use this knowledge to try and defeat you. All of us have been there. I've been there too. But don't let it affect you. Don't let it, when you feel it, Change your mind, change your tune, change your thoughts, whatever you have to do. Change them. The devil has assigned demons to follow you, to become familiar with you, with everything that disturbs you. When the time is right, they will manifest themselves or set up a situation to which they know you will react in a certain way. Let's go to 2 Timothy 2. 2 Timothy 2, 24 through 26. Second Timothy 2, 24 through 26. And the servant of the Lord must not strive, but be gentle unto all men, apt to teach and patient, in meekness, instructing those that oppose themselves. If God preadventure will give them repentance to the acknowledging of the truth, and that they may recover themselves out of the snare of the devil who are taken captive by him at his will. Now they will know how you will react in a certain circumstance or a certain, because they've watched you, they've observed you. But I tell you what, recover yourself out of that snare of the devil and don't be taken captive by him at his will. Release him and let him go in Jesus' name. Now, spirits are passed down from one member of the family or from a member of a closely related group to another. I'm sure you've noticed it. I have. Babies have very little resistance 
and it's relatively easy for a spirit to attach itself to a child unless someone is covering that child with prayer. You need to cover those children with prayer. You really, really do. Examine the behavior or characteristics of a family and you'll be amazed to see the same general group, groups of spirits operating in their lives through rebellion, strife, jealousy, fear of darkness, alcoholism, drugs, migraine headaches, epilepsy, and self-pity. Learn to deal with these specific spirits. Cast them out of your life or out of a person that's in your family. Uh, examine them and tell, you know, examine their behavior and let them know that uh, those things should not be operating through them. And, and tell them that that's what it is. It's, it's uh, spirits that are operating in their lives. And get it off of them. Get it out of them in Jesus' name. And you can do it if, if they will allow you to. But that's what they do. And that's how they act. And the Bible says, don't give them place at all. Get rid of them. Now, familiar spirits are mentioned more than 15 times in the Old Testament, 1 Samuel 28 and Deuteronomy 18, 11. Let's go there very, very quickly because we're running out of time. But Deuteronomy uh, 18, 12, or 18, 11. Let's see what it says. Oh, that, we read that a while ago. Of a charmer or a consulter with familiar spirits or a wizard or a necromancer. You don't have anything to do with them in Jesus' name. It's an abomination to the Lord. Just know that God loves you and he doesn't want these things tormenting you in any way. Hallelujah. Well, I want you to always remember in his presence is fullness of joy. Bye-bye. Thank you for joining us today for In His Presence. You can write Jeannie Caldwell at Post Office Box 26207, Little Rock, Arkansas, 72221, or email her at JeannieCaldwell at VTNTV.com. To order a DVD of today's program, call 1-800-264-2525 and ask for the offer number on the screen. Join us next time as we meet In His Presence.